Hello everyone, I'm Rodney from 3dgameman.com and today I'm looking at the Silverstone ST1500GS 1500 watt power supply, yes, 1500 watts. Very impressive indeed. So is this box, quite nice. Pretty, lots of pictures, as well as features and specifications about it. Now let's open it up and see what's inside. Ooh, would you look at this. They include a magnetic dust filter, nice touch, as well as a spec manual, a user's manual, packaged extremely well, high quality styrofoam here. The power supply, it is in this bag. Take this plastic off if I possibly can, which I can't. I'll do it later. <laughs> Included in this is a bag and it has a bunch of Velcro ties, four regular black screws and four thumb screws. They are also black as well as some plastic cable ties, a massively thick power supply cord which is to be expected for a 1500 watt power supply and look at this flat flexible leads the strider gold s line is currently available in three wattages 750 850 and the one that i will be reviewing today the 1500 that's right 1500 watts packaged in this little teeny tiny housing crazy right anyone who's an enthusiast will get super hot and bothered by this anyway <laughs> let's quickly go over how this wattage is determined and to understand that you need to know what rails are now rails are basically well-regulated transformers that convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use and there are essentially two different rails the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail now in this particular case the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 150 watts and the 12 volt is 1,440 watts, yeah. And <laughs> let me tell you this, its peak is 1,600 watts. With that, let's just try to continue with the video review. <laughs> okay, so the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards, and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. It is also very important to know the peak amps on each rail. Now the plus 3.3 volt and the plus 5 volt rails on this power supply are 25 amps each, and it has actually two plus 12 volt rails, and they are 70 amps each. I mean, some power supplies only have, well, 70 amps, and that's it. And that's a really good high wattage power supply. This one has two. That's just crazy. So you're out there hunting for a power supply, and you want to be thrifty, right? Who doesn't? Want to get something that is, you know, decent, but it's not going to break the bank. Whatever you do, do not cheap out on a power supply. Get a brand name quality power supply. Now that doesn't mean that you can't get a good deal on a power supply. Just get a good deal on a brand name power supply. Because let me tell you, if something happens to this, if you're lucky, this just goes. If you're unlucky, well, it's going to destroy components in your computer system and that will ruin your week. Now there are many things to remember when selecting a power supply, but the first is wattage. You need to determine how much wattage you are going to require for your particular system. Not, you know, your friend's computer system. Oh, I've got a fancy 1500 watt power supply. If you don't need a 1500 watt power supply, don't waste the money and get one, if you have the money, I guess, and you're rich. Why not? You can have bragging rights then. But generally speaking, a medium to high-end gaming rig would require a 500 to 700 watt power supply. And to be honest, that's where you know most people are. For a hardcore system, select a power supply that's around 800 watts. However, if you're totally insane and you're building an extreme gaming rig with a top-of-line multiple video card setup, then you want to go to a power supply, well, that's like this above 
1000 watts. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficiency. This power supply's efficiency is between 87 to 90% and that's at 20 to 100% loading. This power supply is just on the fringe of being platinum. It isn't, I'll go into the certification a little later on though. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directive over voltage, under voltage and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has APFC, APFC or active power factor correction. Assist the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage and it allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply has APFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, AD Plus, NVIDIA SLI and AMD Crossfire. Now, many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications and this power supply, as you can see, right here is 80 plus gold certified. Six, look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors because this ensures a much more reliable product than a power supply with low grade capacitors. And this power supply, of course, has Japanese capacitors. Now, finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup, but also consider one that has a modular design like this one does with those fancy flat flexible leads because, well, it just cleans up the mess inside of the case. Also, it's important to get a power supply with an excellent warranty. You never know when something is going to go wrong. And today's power supplies, at least the high quality brand name ones, well, they usually come with a five year or seven plus year warranty. Oddly enough, this one only comes with a three year warranty. And let's face it, this is a premium high wattage power supply. So it's very, very surprising. Now, that's not saying that you're going to have a problem with it, but it's still nice to have that warranty there if something does happen to go wrong. This power supply comes with a rough, very durable paint finish. The housing, of course, is steel. They include a rather large 135 millimeter fan, and there is lots of ventilation, so it should remain cool in just about any environment. And the size on this is ridiculous. I mean, this is a 1500 watt power supply with a 135 millimeter fan jam packed inside of this thing. I mean, it is super, super tiny when you think about it. Also, you've got a power connection on this end, but note, there's no power switch and that's a little bit disappointing. Now this power supply is 100% modular and that's just brilliant because you can hide away, tuck away all those nasty looking cables, you know, behind the motherboard tray. And this of course tidies everything up, but it also increases airflow inside the case. Now I absolutely adore these flat flexible leads. I prefer them over any other type because you well you can route them so easily around just about anything and i think they look rather sweet plus look at this they include a flat flexible 24 pin lead now they have a label here this will make it really easy to connect all of the leads and note except for the 24 pin connector they have these capped pretty fancy Looks good, but also keeps the dust out. Finally, have a listen to the 135 millimeter fan. So the question here is, can you forgive this power supply for only coming with a three-year warranty and not having a power switch? I think the answer to that question is a definite yes, although I do like my power switches. Very handy to have when the system completely freezes. I mean, this is a super compact 1500 watt power supply that is entirely modular and sports a 135 millimeter fan that's super quiet. Without a doubt, this is a 100% kick-ass product. Until next time, take care.